Hi all, uh, my name is Stanley Wong, and uh, so my project for uh, Computing for Global Challenges is a network analysis with Twitter data. And uh, all right, so, so during my project, uh, there are mainly three parts. Uh, the first part is the data collection. But first, I want to introduce the background of this project. Uh, so the background of this project is first that uh, it is a uh, a comp uh, to uh, complement with uh, UBA's effort to participate in the Social Sim Challenge uh, sponsored by DARPA, DARPA. So basically, the Social Sim Challenge is a challenge to uh, simulate to the behaviors and uh, and to pr uh, predict user behaviors as well. So and uh, also just uh, the, also just to uh, to the public interest that's the. So there's a lot of news with regard to social media recently. Uh, so there's uh, data breaches and other scandals. So th uh, this work will be uh, to help predict some of the, uh, and to stop some of the behaviors that uh, that's currently exist on social media sites. So, so, the, so to, to make a successful effort to collect the data, uh, we have to make a, make a basic, make a, for that, the reason is because that Twitter has multiple uh, API limits, that uh, uh, and uh, uh, such as that uh, you can only see certain amount of followers per user, and you can see certain amount of uh, tweets per user. So, in order to uh, to optimize our effort to extract the most amount of data from Twitter, uh, we we would have to uh, build such a Data collection tool. All right. So the data, so the, the foundation of the data collection is built on the followers network. So here's the uh, a structure for it. Uh, so basically, in order to construct a followers network, uh, again there are multiple networks that, uh, exist on Twitter. Uh, follows such as followers network. There's also mansion mansions network. So based on network constructed based on ha hashtags. Uh, sorry, uh, um, on ad symbols and or based on hashtags. And the following network is constructed by, uh, so you will start with a, a root user and see, and, and all the edges are, are constructed by if they are following someone. So this is the structure. Obviously, you see from a root user, you will go through a, a portion of his followers, and you will expand the top 10 followers uh, based on certain, based on how active they are. And to repeat that process in order to Pull enough users into the network to to construct a large enough network, and uh, now in, in that process there are some issues such as the most active users they may be bots, they may be automatically programmed to retweets and tweets uh, a large chunk of data. So I so that's why I, I also integrated a bot detection algorithm uh, to filter out these bots in order to make a more robust network. And after the construction of the network is done, uh, we will uh, we'll see each user's uh, tweet time, uh, Twitter timeline. And to, uh, so the timeline consists of all the user's history, uh, their tweets, retweets, and all their, uh, their uh, interactions with other users. And uh, uh, for the result of the data collection, we have collected 20 million tweets, uh, 12 gigabytes of Twitter data, and 3,200 tweets per user. If, uh, which is the uh, Twitter's uh, API limit. Oh. Yes. Slide. All right. So after the network is constructed, we also make a semantic network for for each user uh, with two tools. Uh, the first is Spacey, which is a, a natural language processing tool uh, utilized to tokenize uh, users' tweets and into words and recognize those words they are part of speech uh, parts of speech and the second tool we utilize is network X which is a, a, a tool to construct a network based on all those uh, words uh, turning into nodes in the network and, uh, and after we construct a network for each user we'll make uh, several visualizations as you can see uh, it, they are done with uh, the uh, tool called Gephi so the so the first one is is the user network of the the Twitter data I collected. So it is consists of uh, roughly nine thousand users, uh, and uh, each edge will can uh, will represent uh, if a user is following the other user, that there will be edge between those two users, and and the the 
the second graph over here is the semantic network for for user, just for example. So uh, the, the size of the, the words uh, denotes uh, how frequent those words how frequent those words exist uh, within that user's timeline, and uh, and uh, within each tweet, uh, each words in that tweet will have, will be connected with each other, each other words in the tweets with with edges. And lastly, it's just a word cloud for that user and word and obviously the larger size denote uh, that that those words appear more frequent in that user's timeline. The last thing we did is to uh, make a uh, is a user behavior prediction tool. So, so the goal of this is to predict uh, what user might do one day when this user see a tweet. So those are uh, so within Twitter, those are the possible user interactions they may have with that tweet. So this user may retweet that tweet when the user sees that tweet, uh, or reply, or quote, or add, or like. Or maybe when the user sees that tweet, the user uh, does nothing, so it will be no action. And, uh, and in this process, the parameters are for centrality measures. So the central measures are basically uh, measures that to determine how important uh, vertices, are, uh, vertices are in a graph. And, uh, and, and this one is done by first tokenize the text and to calculate the individual centrality measures of the text of the tweet and to add up all the centrality, uh, to sum up all the word, uh, the centrality measures of, of all those words in a, in a tweet uh, to construct a training data set. And also the training data set also, con also contain features from the user level data, for example. Uh, it might be helpful to know that, uh, that this user is mostly likely to retweet uh, some uh, uh, another user who maybe who uh, may have a lot of uh, original tweets and maybe yeah and it 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 could be helpful to know so that's why I included th that into our training data set as well and for the results so the accuracy of a multi-class uh, classification so basically my model uh, intend to uh, uh, produce a probability measure for for each of those five actions that the user may take when they see a tweet. And uh, the accuracy is around 57% for, uh, for a, for, uh, multi-class uh, classification. And here you can see the RC curve for that. So uh, obviously the RC, uh, so obviously my model currently is better at predicting some of user's behaviors. I believe it is more likely to predict if the user likes something or the user retweets something. And uh, so here, and, and here's a graph of uh, how the how the how. So basically, I will have to write a series of scripts and to uh, connect them together in order to produce the output. All right. So for the future improvements for my model, uh, I will obviously need a, a, a larger data set uh, to, to test up, to test about uh, the accuracies, and also I will intend to uh, to uh, do a do a uh, deeper analysis of the correlations of the features. Uh, uh, so to filter out some of the features that's less relevant in order to make a more more robust model for this for this to to make predictions. And thank you.